Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And Jordan Drake here. And this is a special night because this is our annual best and worst of end of year 2021. Yeah, I and mean, this is a tradition. We've been doing it for almost 10 years now. Another tradition is our buddy Levi Hallwell generally shoots these. It, not only is he shooting it today, but he's also actually let us into his abode. So fantastic. Thank you so much, Levi. Special thanks. And this is our end of year celebration where we talk about the best and worst gear that we have personally reviewed right. and tested. Right. Yeah, this so, is different from the regular DP yeah. Review Best of Awards. These are our own picks. And we have one other tradition that's always been at play, yes. Chris. A slightly competitive game with some drinking involved. So what are we uh, drinking tonight? Right, so what are we drinking for our Christmas tradition this year is Moscow Mule, nothing to do with Moscow. So spicy ginger beer, of course. This is high quality vodka made just outside the city of Calgary. So of course that just means it's cheap. Look, classy bottle. Copper cups, but we are barbarians tonight. No lime, so we just do squirty squirty. Yeah? All right, so we got our drinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about what we're gonna do. <laughs> what kind of ginger beer is that? It's spicy ginger. It is. I'll, I said I'll, spicy I'll ginger. I'll acclimate, spicy. keep going. It's the best, it's okay, anyways. So we always have a competitive game, you know, just to keep things fun. And uh, I thought this year, why don't we just do a good old fashioned spelling bee? I love it. I didn't have spelling bees in my school. I always thought I'd be good at them. I mean, you're, you're very well spoken and well read, but I do have to admit, Back in like grade four, that's like 1988. When my wife was born. Yeah, it was a good year for Calgary. <laughs> uh, I had the highest spelling average of the whole school and I got to go on Channel 2 and 7, Spelling Bee TV show hosted by Ed Whalen, the great, and we lost. I, I misspelled kindergarten, I threw a D in there. You don't grow kids in a frickin' garden. But uh, anyways, the point is uh, we're gonna do a Spelling Bee. We should get started with that, but People are going to need to know how they can differentiate the two of us. Right, because we we're both so wearing similar. the same blue shirt today. So yeah. I brought this for you. Oh, nice. With so the it has strap. 35, your number 35, because that's your favorite number. And uh, I put <laughs> some pirate um, things on okay. there because you're a salty dog and some stars because you're the star it. of our show. I made you one here too using a, a USB cable. Good. And no, it no, has no your, color at it all. It has your name. And of course, I, its spelling is completely accurate. And you know, I, it took everything in me not to choose number 69 for you, but I figured that'd be juvenile. So instead, you're just a big fat zero. The other thing I want to mention is the rules. So basically, if you get your word right the other person takes a drink if you mess up your word you take a drink that way people are just drinking all the time I love it uh, number 35 your word is sergeant 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 all right uh, I, I don't think I need that in a sentence s-a-r-g-e-a-n-t incorrect s-e-r please leave the stage all right number zero Jordan your word is hierarchy ooh Hierarchy, H-I-E-R-A-R-C-H-Y, hierarchy. Correct. Woo! Where's drink. my drink? Come drink. Oh. Get in the harsh light and drink your drink. Okay, so we're going to start off with best lens of the year, but we're going to change things a little bit. We decided we would do best lens of the year for micro four thirds, APS-C, and full frame. Yeah, we're not going to do medium format lenses because yeah. they're all pretty good. So for our runner-up for Micro Four Thirds Lens of the Year, we really thought about the new OM Systems 20mm f1.4, but I really want to focus on the kind of lenses that you can't get in any other system, and one that definitely fits that criteria is the new Panasonic 25-50 to f1.7. It's a sister lens to the 10-25 to that I use all the time. Actually, the 25-50 to is filming me right now. It probably looks great. I love that it's very well breathing corrected, has an excellent mechanical focus clutch. It's just brilliantly designed for video, and a constant super bright aperture on a smaller sensor makes a lot of sense for video shooting. All right, so our best lens of the year from Micro Four Thirds, we're gonna give it to the Olympus 8 to 25. I mean, this was a very versatile wide angle that then encroached into the normal range as well. And I loved it shooting the mountains where I could just take one lens and still happily get many different kinds of photos. It's got that fast motor, but it still has that manual focus clutch, great macro capabilities, rugged construction, a little bit hefty, but not too heavy and everything felt solidly built. Optically, other than the bokeh being fairly average, everything else was sharp, easily our best micro four thirds lens of the year there are four lights i'm ready number 35 spell pterodactyl what the f p t e r o d a 
C T Y L. Correct. <laughs> I'm impressed. Wow. Oh, I'm not drinking. You drink. I was about to drink. Liaison. Ooh, liaison. L I A S O N. Liaison. I am sorry, that is incorrect. What? Okay, so now it's time for best APS-C lens of the year. Uh, I was really happy to see that Fuji is like updating all of their older designs, it seems, especially the prime lenses. I mean, the 18 mil was interesting. The 23 mil I'm not gonna like because you know obvious reasons, but really I'm gonna go with the 33 millimeter 1.4. It was a fantastic lens, you know, a focal length that we haven't really quite seen before, just a little bit different than the 35, but I enjoyed using it and it was very good optically. But the best APS-C lens, in our opinion, is the brand new Sigma 18-50 f2.8, which is available right now in Sony E-mount and L-mount, in case you've got one of those APS-C Leica cameras. I don't know. But this is a brilliant lens. It's very, very sharp. Breathing corrected. We really like the character of it. And it's quite affordable when a lot of the best optics are getting very expensive. This is something that's so affordable. If you're grabbing a Sony APS-C camera, I think this should be a no-brainer, and I would like to see it in all of the different APS-C lens mounts if Canon and Nikon ever open in those protocols. Jordan, you're not allowed to cut the four lights thing. Did you get the four lights reference? What? No, I don't know what Levi, that is. Levi, did you get the four lights reference? No. no? Star Trek The Next Generation. You f***ing nerd. Okay, so number 35, lackadaisical. Oh my god. Um, could you please use that in a sentence? I mean, I know what it means. Chris did not shoot the sample gallery on time because he was being lackadaisical with That's, his work. That sounds about right. I have no idea. Um, L-A-C-A. -A. No. Jordan, you might actually get this because you are this. All oh, right. legend, L-E-G-E-N-D. Correct, but that's not the word. Okay, are you ready? Number zero, your word is bourgeois. Ooh, B-O-U-G. I am afraid you're incorrect. Oh, J. It's, it's oh. bourgeois, you wealthy landowner. Okay, so it's almost time to do our best lens full frame of the year. But before we do that, let's talk about some honorable mentions because it seems like we had some really interesting new general purpose professional zoom lenses. Yeah, I mean, on the same topic as that Sigma 18 to 50 I just mentioned, right. the new Tamron 28 to 75. Oh, yeah. The old lens was an absolute steal. It was insanely popular for that reason. The new one is not that much more, and it is even better again. Mm -hmm. It's a great lens. It's just not that innovative. No. And you know, on that same token, I think another honorable mention is the new Sony 70 200 2.8G Master. I mean, again, not innovative. This is just uh, replacing, it's uh, so light, that's but it's so it. small, right? But it's a great general purpose lens. They managed to make it optically fantastic considering the first one needed some improvement. And I mean, just yeah, rugged, compact, lightweight, and very good optically. Yeah, but expensive. But what's our runner up? So our official number two runner up lens of the year in full frame is gonna go to the Sony 14 millimeter f 1.8 G Master. There was already a Sigma 14 1.8 that was quite well regarded, but the Sony was so much smaller and optically quite a bit better. I just can't believe that they were able to pull this off, especially when they were saying like, you can't make ultra wide bright lenses with that tiny Sony E-mount. Sony just seems to be on a vendetta this year with this and the 51 2 to prove all of those people wrong. And I think they shut a few people up with our number two lens of the year. And best lens of 2021 when it comes to full frame, it's the Tamron 35 to 150. I mean, it's unique focal range, but everybody really seems to dig it. It's sharp, it's well built, it actually has much better bokeh now than we normally expect out of Tamron zooms. The only thing that we could even find to complain about it was excessive flare, but anytime you people see it on the forums and the sample galleries, you say, actually, it looks really cool. So I guess there's nothing bad about this lens. An easy victory. Number 35, Faro. Oh. P-H-A-R-O-A-H. No, A-O-H. Oh, you... Drink your drink. You dead Egyptian king, you. <laughs> Hit me. Uh... Ah. All right. I can't see you coming. The light's so bright. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're being interrogated. Now answer the word, number zero. Your spelling word is abhorrence. Abhorrence. Oh, okay. Uh... A B H O R R A N C E. So close. E N C E. Oh, 
All right, so runner up for best video camera of 2021. Might seem strange, but we're actually gonna give it to the Nikon Z9 because it's got such amazing photographic features. I mean, 45 megapixel sensor with excellent dynamic range. I love the fact that it can shoot 30 frames per second. Okay, what That's are you basically doing? Okay, video. so we're talking about video at this point. No, so uh, this is my favorite video camera that I filmed on this year. I mean, you've got unbelievable autofocus on it, very detailed 4K, the option to shoot 8K. There's no overheating restrictions. Two hundredths of a second flash sync and, and electronic shutter. And it's going to get better with the firmware they've already announced. 3D We're going to be tracking on internal focus. raw in a variety of flavors. It is a delight. Best video camera of the year might also be called the most innovative video camera of the year. It is the DJI Ronin 4D, which is basically a four axis gimbal with a full frame camera strapped to the top of it. That's the headline feature, but it had so many really cool improvements like a using LiDAR for a focus waveform that showed you like an overhead view of your subject where you could pull focus through them or a haptic feedback focus wheel where it's very smooth when you're pulling focus but then you want to change your ND and suddenly it's big clicky stops and Levi's cat is running all over the place here. It's a very interesting camera. It does internal raw. I just think it's a whole lot of very creative thinking that we're not seeing as much yeah, with a lot of the mirrorless cameras. But it doesn't cameras. do photography and there's no flash capabilities on it. It does have image stabilization. It though. is a video camera and that is the category is video camera, and I really love that one. Sucks for photos. Valid. Mm. Mm. Best camera. Yeah, but we're empty. We need more drinks. How many shots are in this? Enough. You made a horrible spelling mistake on my name. What? We have pizza here? And it's a spelling contest. Oh. What do you do? Pizza? Um. Can you pick a word? Yum. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um. okay. <laughs> All right. Number 35. Please spell Sir Lawrence Olivier. Who directed the 2011 Thor movie? Also known as the first Thor. I know Lawrence Olivier has directed a Thor movie. And I said, why? Hamlet. Uh, <laughs> is it Olivier? It's not. No, oh. it's Kenneth Branagh. Lawrence well, Olivier. Lawrence Olivier never, 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 never did it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. S I R. L A U R E N C E O L V I E R. I V I E R. Unfortunately, <sighs> drink. Lord High Regent Magistrate Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> Okay, just Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. K-E-N-N-E-T-H B-R-A-N-A-U-G-H. Oh, hubris. You throw in a letter when you're not supposed to and I leave one out. Oh. B-R-A-N-A-G-H. It's Branaga. I don't know where my drink went. Okay, Jordan, I would like to interject a... Um, Category. Don't change the format. No, well, I would like to. So, format. this is my idea. Best DSLR for 2021. Are you okay? And so, it's run up Nikon Z9, That's bar none. It, yeah, but it looks like one and it feels like one. If you close your eyes, you'd be like, I'm holding a DSLR. Okay. okay, fine. So, then if you're going to be a stickler, then I think the number one choice Pentax K33. By virtue of no competition, this year the best digital SLR is the Pentax K33. Yes, it's a great camera and the cult of K33 is going to love it. And don't say we never did anything for you, Pentax. And Just don't message us anymore, you guys are mean. <laughs> okay, Jordan, best camera of 2021. I'm skipping right ahead. It's the Nikon ZFC. What? I mean, it. yeah, it's just beautifully styled. They actually got the classic styling perfect. I mean, you know, it's got a viewfinder. It autofocuses. That's funny. That's you know, not even in like my top Sensor in there. And it's just even. so gorgeous. And when they make a full frame version, it'll be the best camera of 2022. So well, Nikon ZFC, we're done. This is Jordan and Chris's opinion. So that's not going to be it. We're going to move on to our real honorable uh, mention. Okay, so our runner-up for camera of the year is actually going to go to the Fujifilm GFX 100S, which is great because I actually got a lot of time to shoot photos on it while Chris was in his basement battling COVID. I was prancing through the fields, really loving the build quality and the image quality of this 
really premium medium format sensor but at a more approachable price point with better ergonomics than the more expensive GFX 100 it really does make high-end medium format accessible to a lot more people you can't find them anywhere because everyone wants one and that's why it's our runner-up for best camera of the year Okay, Jordan, so we're going to do our best camera of 2021 actually together okay. as a discussion because we had a really unique situation here. We had the three major camera companies, Nikon, Canon, Sony, come out with very powerful flagship cameras. Yeah, exactly. All full frame, all stacked sensors. There's a lot of similarities in all of them. Uh, and they're all targeting a slightly different audience. Sure. I'm immediately going to say it can't be the R3 because it can't show you its goddamn level <laughs> or histogram while you're rolling the video. Okay. So immediate disqualification. I'm going to be more reasonable. I mean, although it has excellent and very innovative autofocus, it's still out because honestly, it's a niche camera and the other two cameras looking at are more capable of doing more kinds of photography. Let's okay. go with that. Sony A1, tell me what you think. So, I mean, really, uh, the Sony A1 being the oldest of the cameras, you almost might feel that, again, everybody else is following behind them, but they do innovate some amazing stuff. I mean, that camera has mechanical shutter, doesn't really need it. Yeah, uh, but it's the best mechanical shutter. It is the best mechanical, isn't that strange? But fast shooting with high megapixels, good buffer rate. Uh, you know, the only thing you can really fault the Sony A1 on is it's still sort of the classic Sony A1 ergonomics. Yeah, so if you like a small body, that actually might make it the best one. But I think we're both in agreement here that the Nikon Z9 is, I think it's camera of the year, to be honest. They jumped from, I was not expecting nearly as impressive a camera as what we right. got. Already, I've said, it's an unbelievable video camera, but for photos, well, oh. you also told them why it's great for photos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact is we love it for video, we love it for photography. The autofocus, the return to 3D tracking just makes so much sense because it's simple and it works. And the camera's rugged enough to handle any situation. It's very versatile, and it's not the most expensive of the bunch either. So really, yeah, Nikon Z9, they really hit it out of the park this year. Huge, come from behind yep. story, uh, which is part of the reason I agree. It's yeah. Camera of the year. So now let's see a ZFC full frame with a stack sensor. That would be, that would be great. That's all we need. Guarantee. Guarantee. G U A R A N T E E. Correct. Guarantee. Scintillation. Oh. Scintillation. We all eagerly uh, expect your answer <laughs> with scintillation. No, that doesn't. You didn't even use it properly. <laughs> I know how to spell this word. Okay. Scintillation. S C I N T I L A T I O N. Unfortunately, you missed an L. Double it's two L. L's, double Ow. L. Oh, contarnet. <laughs> Spell contarnet. I can't. <laughs> okay, Jordan. It's time for our worst cameras. You okay there? Worst video cameras, worst cameras, worst lenses. All okay. right, and let's start with worst video camera. And before I do that, yes. I want to mention these are only context. yes, these are only cameras that we've personally reviewed ourselves. Right. right? There might be worse cameras out there, but we haven't played with them, so we're not going to mention them. That wouldn't be fair. So the Sigma FPL uh, before they oh, had the no. FP which was a shutterless, very small camera, but it had a sensor that's very good for video. Sure. And then they were like, well, that seemed to go well enough, although I don't know if anyone bought one. So uh, why don't we just jam over 60 megapixels into that same frame and what did that do to us, Jordan? What did that do to the video camera? Well, I mean, it's horrible rolling shutter. Now, you could switch it to, there were other modes that had less rolling shutter, but then you're throwing all your detail away because now it's line skipping, so it's really soft. And then you might be like, ah, but I'd like a little better color space and then your video is soft and terrible or it's like okay then we'll drop it down to 8-bit color and now you've got horrible rolling shutter but more detailed video again it's just an endless series of weird compromises right. it's the wrong sensor to go in a shutterless camera Fair so it's not a great video camera as a result psychology oh I am uh, baffled by Chris's <laughs> as in Chris needs some serious psychological work okay uh, P S Y C H O L O G Y. Correct. I have so many daddy issues, of course I know psychology. Spell mnemonic. Part of the title of your favorite movie of all I'd like time. To, I'd like to go on record that that is not my favorite movie of all time. You it's, love the dolphin. You love dolphins. There's a lot dolphins. of toss-ups. Sometimes it's adaptation, sometimes it's Amadeus, but it always starts no. with an A. Uh, mnemonic is M N E M. O-N-I-C. 
Because it's his favorite movie of all time. That's so unfair. Okay, so again, worst lens of the year this time, but things that we have played with ourselves. Yes. I, it's gonna be the Lau a 35. No. It has. Sir, good sir. I it don't, object. It had, don't break my. It has to be Jordan. Optically, this lens is a piece of no, poop. No, absolutely. Okay, so it has some technical limitations. Wide yes, open, like it's, it's soft. It has some minimal usable problems, aperture. So you just shoot black and white. But shooting the sample gallery for this lens is some of the most fun. Like I love a lot of the images that I got out of this lens. It can't be the worst if it created. So here's the thing that I love it. Joy too. to my heart. I have to admit, but optically, it's just it's just yucky. I mean, any metric by which you would you know measure a lens. It fails in pretty much yeah, every way. Yeah, if you're way. shooting charts, but if you're trying to capture a beautiful transcendent moment that can reach out of the photographic frame and tug at your heart strings, then the Lauer 35 at 0.95. 2021, it was just a year of amazing lenses. There was no bad lenses. So this Someone is the only probably one made like a bad no. manual okay. focus, 100 millimeter, 50 mil f2 the, or something like that. The best that's out there. worst lens of 2021. Can we agree on that? No, you're a monster. So more so than best camera, a lot of you seem much more fascinated in what we're going to pick. For the most anticipated category, it is worst oh, wait, camera wait, 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 of the year. One thing, one wait, thing, wait, one thing. No. What? Please. It's Christmas. It's the giving season. I need to ask you for just a small donation. Am I still in the frame? Please, just click that subscribe button. Do you want to see two YouTubers next year doing best and worst stuff with frivolity and jokes mm -hmm. and drinking? Look at this you man. You do want that. He needs this. All right, sorry, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. I'm you were trying saying? to say it is the time for worst camera of the year. Chris? You played with a lot of cameras. This is photographic specific. Okay. We're Again, leaving video functionality out I of this. Just want to so, go by what we've tested so far. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Why? It's the Sigma FPL. Oh, my pick. It's the Sigma. I mean, for fight, you know, you take a camera which is not very functional for video. You slap a bigger megapixel sensor in it and you make it a photo it's camera. Not a bigger sensor. It is not physically the pitch, just the higher count, the more. Anyways, you're very good at You make job. me do L mount test chart lenses on that thing and I chart want lenses? Test chart you, test chart he, shots. He shoots on the L mount a test chart on with the, the FPL because it's got the bigger megapixel no, count. The higher the megapixel. Big, higher megap and I <laughs> I hate it. I hate using the menu. I hate that it forces me to set things up a certain way. It doesn't make any intuitive sense. It's just slow and yucky and garbagey, and I don't like it, and I don't want to do it anymore, and so I'm waiting for the next year. All I want for Christmas is to not have to do test track shots on the FTL. Nobody else likes it. Does anybody else out there like it? Anybody? If if you like it, leave it in the comments below. I dare you. What makes it even more egregious is they're like, we're going to make a high resolution shutterless camera. And they dropped a sensor that makes no sense with that yes. in the same year that the Z9 comes out and shows them, this is exactly how you yes. do a shutterless high resolution camera. Acrimonious. Oh. A C R I M O. U-N-I-U-S. Okay, so I just want everybody to know, this is Jordan's final words. Uh, final word, if he gets this, uh, it, we force a tiebreaker. Could you split if he does not get this, a little? Uh, I win. Are you mentally prepared? I am. Okay, I'll use this in a sentence. My intentions towards you are always Machiavellian. Please Ooh. spell Machiavellian. <laughs> Machiavellian. M A C H I A V E L I A N. Again, the double, double L. The what? double L. The double L. <laughs> oh. These do not taste good anymore. All right, Jordy Boo, it was a fraught battle. You did very well. In fact, actually, we both did really poorly. I mean, I like to look at this as a redemption story since you've lost the last two years in a row. This is a it's real true. Rudy situation that right. we're dealing with right now. So good job, Thank Chris. you. Plus that loss on national TV. Well, 
that you're still. Yeah. You know what? If anyone has a copy of a tape from <laughs> two and seven from 1988-ish with a uh, yeah sunny side grade four sunny side elementary school floundering on the world kindergarten, no. I would love a copy. It was an interesting year, 2021 for camera gear, right? I mean, we had some series flagship cameras come out, lots of great third-party glass, and not since the Canon XC10 have we had a camera lose both best. Well, best photo, photo, camera, photo worst, video, photo, worst, worst, yeah, photo video camera, video, photo. Yeah. yeah. All right, deep your VTV viewers. That wraps up another best and worst of 2021. Again, we would love to say thank you all for watching our show all these years and supporting us. We really appreciate it. Big thanks to Levi Hallwell as well for letting us invade his space shoot the cameras, and hopefully do it again next year. We really appreciate his help. Um, otherwise, do go to deepreview.com. You can see the staff's picks for their best and worst of 2021. That's a fantastic read. Link in the description below. And kids, stay in school. Get good grades. Read a book. Don't drink too much. And uh, don't aspire to be a YouTuber because we, can't, is stupid. we can't spell. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for joining us, and we wish you guys a happy holiday season, and we shall see you all soon for another episode of Deep Review TV. I'm going to learn Latin. <laughs> <laughs>